coming. It, uh, it feels like years uh, in the making, and I guess that is because it really has been. Um, <clears throat> you'll hear this morning from a lot of the key players in this endeavor, people who were uh, essential to making this thing work. Um, and really, we'd like to thank all of them for uh, really going out on a limb with us. Um, I'd also like to thank my colleagues, John McDonald and Mike Utz, especially Mike, without his conviction and his persistence and perseverance, we simply wouldn't be here today. He's worked on this literally for six years now in the making. Our interest in this project arose originally from the fact that here at Boulevard, we use a lot of glass. And we have seen ourselves for some time really as part of the problem. Each year throughout our territory, we sell beer in more than 25 million glass bottles. About 10 million of those this year alone will find their way into metro area landfills right here in greater Kansas City. And that, frankly, bothered us. The story of Ripple Glass is long and convoluted, but at heart it's really pretty simple, and I'll try to boil it down for you briefly. It starts with the idea that it is better to recycle and to reuse glass than to bury it in a landfill. Now, that may seem self-evident, but <clears throat> um, for some people it's not. The reasons, briefly, are that glass requires raw materials, energy, and labor to manufacture. When you throw those away, they're lost forever. If you reuse those, you can recapture significant portions of all of those ingredients. Glass also has a unique property in that it can be recycled endlessly with no loss in quality. <clears throat> when you make new glass or fiberglass out of existing glass, you use 30% less energy. And you save raw materials, mining waste, and you dramatically reduce emissions into our air and water. Right here in Kansas City, there are big users of processed recycled glass, most notably the large fiberglass manufacturers. <clears throat> right now, because of the absence of any local supply, they are having to bring that recycled glass in from hundreds, sometimes thousands of miles away. While here in Kansas City, we are consuming 160 million pounds of container glass annually. Of that, 95%, according to our best estimates, goes into area landfills. According to our research, that makes Kansas City among the 30 largest metropolitan areas in the, uh, in the U.S. last in terms of glass recycling rates. With a recycling a glass recycling rate of about 5% compared to a national average now approaching 30%. Well, why is that? It's really pretty simple. It's because there's no local processor. <clears throat> a processor, in effect, makes a glass fit to reuse by cleaning it, purifying it, drying it, and crushing it. Glass is heavy, so the costs both environmental and economic, to transport glass to the nearest processors that now exist in St. Louis or Oklahoma, cancel out the benefits. Well, why is there no local processor? Because in a classic chicken and egg fashion, there's no meaningful local collection of glass. So to make this thing work, we realized that we just have to do both things at once. We'd have to simultaneously build a state-of-the-art processing facility while developing, basically from the ground up, an effective metro-wide collection network. To the best of our knowledge, this is really a first-of-its-kind effort. And frankly, it is a grand experiment. What we are doing is trying to build a conduit between substantial local supply and significant local demand 
where the two just aren't finding each other at present. Towards that end, we're nearing completion on a uh, three and a half million dollar uh, processing facility near I-435 and Truman Road. And just a couple weeks from now, the first week of November, we'll begin the first phase of our collection efforts by rolling out 60 large dedicated glass collection bins throughout the entire metropolitan area. We're trying to make it convenient and easy, but we're ultimately relying on the conscience and the goodwill of Kansas Cityans to do the right thing. Uh, a brief digression, <clears throat> many people say, why not curbside? Why don't you do it with everything else? And there's a simple answer to that that really needs to get out. It's because glass breaks. And when you mix glass with other recyclable, recyclable materials, you degrade all of those materials, particularly cardboard and paper, and make many of them uh, unusable or certainly less usable. Uh, in fact, in so-called single stream systems, it's not uncommon even for glass, for half of the glass that is collected to be unsalvageable and to end up back in the landfill. So really, the idea of keeping glass separate from those other materials makes an awful lot of sense.